Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3. So today we're going to be doing some more work on our noise generator. So let's head over to the noise script. And uh, we're going to start off by adding three new arguments into our generate noise map method. The first being an integer for the number of octaves, and then two floats, one for the persistence value, and the second for the lacunarity value. All right, so we're going to want to have a loop to loop through all of our octaves. So let's say four int i equals zero, i less than the number of octaves, i plus plus, and we can enclose all of this code in that loop. Then outside of the loop, we'll create our frequency and amplitude variables. So float amplitude is equal to one, and likewise for frequency. And then we also want to keep track of our current height value. So float noise height starts at zero. So then instead of just setting the noise map directly equal to the Perlin value, we'll want to increase the noise height by the Perlin value of each octave. So we can say noise height plus equals Perlin value multiplied by the current amplitude. Then we also want our frequency to take effect. So we're going to be multiplying our sample coordinates by that. So over here we can just add multiplied by frequency and same thing for sample y. So the higher the frequency, the further apart the sample points will be, which will mean that the height values will change more rapidly. So we can say here that at the end of each octave, the amplitude gets multiplied by the persistence value. And remember that's in the range zero to one, so that decreases uh, each octave. And then the frequency gets multiplied by the lacunarity, so the frequency increases each octave since lacunarity should be greater than one. By default, the value that we're getting out of mathf.perlin noise is in the range zero to one, but in order to get slightly more interesting noise, it would be nice if the Perlin value could sometimes be negative so that our noise height would decrease. So let's change this to be in the range negative one to one by multiplying by two and then subtracting one. Then next, we'll want to apply the noise height to our noise map. So outside of the octaves loop, let's just say that the noise map with coordinates x, y is equal to that noise height value. Now, before we return the noise map, we're going to want to normalize it so that all of its values are back in the range zero to one. So in order to do this, we'll need to keep track of the lowest and highest values in the noise map. So outside of all of our for loops, let's create a float for the max noise height, set that equal to float dot min value, and then float min noise height will be equal to float dot max value. So then over here, once we've finished processing the octaves, we can say if the current noise height is greater than the current maximum noise height, then we'll update the maximum noise height to be equal to the noise height. Um, otherwise, if the noise height happens to be less than the minimum noise height, then we'll update to the new minimum noise height. All right, so now that we know what range our noise map values are in, uh, we'll want to loop through all of the noise map values again. So let's just copy these two for loops over here. Then for each value in the noise map, so noise map x comma y, we want to set that equal to mathf dot inverse lerp, and we'll pass in the min noise height, the max noise height, and then our current noise map value. This inverse lerp method returns a value between zero and one. So for example, if our noise map value is equal to the min noise height, then it will return zero. If it's equal to the max noise height, it will return one. If say it was halfway between the two, it would return 0.5 and so on. 
So we've now effectively normalized our noise map, so we can happily return it. Uh, let's save that and just see how things are going. So let's go into the map generator and add these variables. So public int for the number of octaves, public float persistence, and public float lacunarity. And we can pass those into the generate noise map over here. So pass in octaves, persistence, lacunarity, save, and let's give this a try. So if we go onto our map generator, let's try setting the octaves up to something like four. And then the default value for persistence is 0.5 and lacunarity is usually around two. So you can see this gives us a nice sort of uh, cloudy texture and we can just play around with these values, see see what they do. So that all seems to be working pretty well. The goal, of course, is to be able to generate loads of unique noise maps. So we do this by sampling our points from radically different locations. So let's go back into the noise script and somewhere in here, let's add in a new argument, an integer for the seed, so that if we want to get the same map again, we just use the same seed. Then we'll create a system.random object. We can call this PRNG for pseudo random number generator. Set this equal to new system.random, and we can pass our seed into there. Now we actually want each octave to be sampled from a different location. So what we'll do is we'll create an array of vector twos. Call this our octave offsets. Set this equal to a new array of vector twos with a length of octaves. And then we'll do a little loop for int i equals zero, i less than the number of octaves, i plus plus. So now we can say float offset x is equal to random number generator dot next. So one thing that I discovered while testing is that we don't want to give uh, mathf.perlin noise a coordinate that's too high. Otherwise, it seems to just keep returning the same value over and over again. So I found a range of negative 100,000 to positive 100,000 to work pretty well. So let's just go with that. And we can do the same thing for offset y. So just uh, copy this line. And then we can say that octave offsets with an index of i is equal to a new vector 2 made up of offset x and offset y. All right, so then when we're choosing our sample points over here, we can just add octave offsets with an index of i dot x. And same thing for sample y, of course, just using the y axis. We might also want to sort of be able to scroll through the noise by uh, providing our own offset value. So let's just add on a vector to offset over here. And then when we're calculating these, we can add offset.x as well as offset.y. All right, so back to our map generator. Let's create these two new uh, parameters, public int seed and public vector to offset. So pass the seed in over here and the offset at the end. Let's try this out. So if we change our seed, we should get completely different noise maps, which seems to be working. And we can also scroll through the noise like so. Okay, one last thing that I'd like to do is uh, when we change our noise scale, we sort of zoom in to the top right corner and it would be nicer if we would zoom in to the center so back into the noise script, let's calculate the values of half of the map width. So let's say float half width is equal to map width divided by 2f and float half height is equal to map height divided by 2f as well. Then we can say instead of just using our x value, we'll use x minus half the width and likewise y minus half the height. 
So now when we change the noise scale, it will always be towards the center. All right, so one last thing I'd like to do is just to clamp some of these values here. So for example, map width and map height should always be greater than zero. So one way we could do this is using our map generator editor script, but an alternative, which uh, I think is less well known, but can prove really handy sometimes is using the onValidate method. So if we go into our map generator, we can just add a void onValidate. So this is called automatically whenever one of the script's variables is changed in the inspector. So we could say something like if the map width is less than one, then reset it to one. And likewise, if the map height is less than one, then just snap that straight back to a value of one. So you can imagine what this will do uh, if we decrease this, it won't allow the value to drop below one. And uh, this will be useful for a few other values such as our lacunarity should also always be one or greater than one. So if lacunarity is less than one, snap that back to one. And octaves should never be negative. So let's say if octaves is less than zero, then we set that right back to zero. And uh, finally, the persistence should always be in a range of zero to one. So let's just turn that into a slider using the range attribute. So we can just say range zero to one. All right, so now all of these uh, values should be behaving. Our persistence is a slider and this all seems correct. So yeah, that's everything for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, until next time, cheers.